Good afternoon, dear students. Today we are going to discuss sonnet number 116 on page number 104. Uh, just like uh, the other Shakespearean sonnets, this sonnet is consisting of uh, four quatrains, each one uh, of four lines, except the final couplet, uh, which consists of only two lines. Uh, the general meter used by Shakespeare is, of course, uh, iambic pentameter, and the rhyme scheme is A B A B C D C D E F E F G G. The major theme of the poem is uh, love, or the true definition of love. The first quatrain defines what love isn't. The second quatrain defines what love really is. Uh, the fourth and the fifth is uh, a confirmation of what, of what true love uh, really is. In the first quatrain, let's read together. Let me not to the marriage of true minds. Shakespeare say that I don't believe in. Let me not to, it means I don't believe in. The marriage, the reciprocity of true minds. The marriage, the union of true lovers. So I don't believe, he says, I don't believe uh, that true love can exist. That the marriage of true lovers uh, does not really exist. So why? He explains in the second line, admit impediments. Admit means due to, because of impediments, which means obstacles or hinders. Love isn't love. He defines what love is by defining what it is not. Love isn't love, which alters when alteration finds. Love doesn't change when it faces or confronts the reasons of change. It should be unchangeable. Or bends with the remover to remove. Love as well does not bend in honey. Okay, with the remover, the remover here is a metaphor of death. The remover is death, or bends with the remover to remove. Uh, it doesn't undergo the influence of death. Death cannot affect true love. In the second quatrain, he goes on to define what love really is oh no it he means love it is an ever fixed mark love is an ever fixed mark and this is another metaphor he refers to uh, love as an ever fixed mark which means a star guide or a guiding star, which this the star is ever fixed, doesn't move, unchangeable. The second line of the second quatrain, that looks untempests. That star looks untempests, and here the word tempests is a symbol of impediments, obstacles, or hinders and is never shaken. Despite these tempests, true love never shakes, never changes, never alters. It is, he means love, love is, it is the star to every wandering bark. Here we, ha we have a third metaphor in which he compares love to 
star, the guiding star in the sky, and say that it is to every wandering bark. Wandering, it means unguided. Bark, a bark is a vessel, a ship, or a boat. So this star guides unguided, okay, lost ships in the sea. Because it is ever vexed, you know, that sailors use uh, the stars to guide them uh, on the sea. Whose worth is unknown? The worth of this star hanging up in the sky, guiding all wandering barks or all wandering ships, its worth is unknown, is unknown by the lovers or by true lovers. Although its height, the height of this star be taken, although its altitude is measured, can be measured, is measurable. And here we have a personification in the usage of the word his to describe the star. The third quatrain loves not times fool here we have another personification love is not times fool it means that love can be deceived by time love can't be deceived by time love isn't the slave of time it is it is not the fool of time Though rosy lips and cheeks, within his bending sickle's compass come, it is not the slave of time, despite that, despite the fact that, okay, it's rosy lips and cheeks, the two phrases or words, rosy lips and cheeks, is a symbol of beauty, the beauty of love, okay? Within his, the pronoun his, this possessive pronoun his, uh, uh, refers to time. Within time's bending sickle, the bending sickle is a farming tool, a long farming tool with a blade, a long curved blade, with which to reap harvests, with which farmers reap harvests, which we call in Arabic al-mingal. Okay, so time does have a bending sickle, a love or the beauty of love. Okay, uh, confronts or uh, comes under the blade of that bending sickle of time. Of course, the bending sickle of time is a metaphor which means the influence of time. Love is affected, is influenced by time's force or by time's power. Okay. Within his bending sickle's compass, the word compass here is not used to refer to the traditional meaning of the word which means uh, this tool or device used for navigation, for knowing the direction. No. Here it means the range. The range. So within his bending sickle's range, okay, though its beauty, its rosy lips and cheeks come, here of course Shakespeare uses uh, the verb or places the verb at the end of the line as is usual with Shakespeare, okay? Usually he ends those lines in, in his poems, science, with a verb, okay? So the, the marks of beauty, the marks of love's beauty, the rosy lips and cheeks come in the range, within the range of time's bending sickle, of time's influence or uh, effect. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, 
Again, he asserts on the meaning that doesn't change, okay, whatsoever. Love alters not, it doesn't change. With his brief hours, with the brief hours of time, and his, of course, is a personification, and weeks. But, in the fourth line, but bears it out. But love bears time out. Love endures or defeats time. Okay, so it refers to time. Even to the edge of doom, even to judgment day, which means that love is eternal as time. Love is eternal just as time. And the final couplet, which of course rounds everything up in this sonnet, okay, if this be error, if what I have said or presumed or suggested about love is an error and upon me proved and that error was proved upon me, I never read. He means that then I have never written anything. I am not a literary man, a man of letters. He risks his own reputation if or in case that his point of view is incorrect. I have never, then I have never written, then I am no writer at all. I have no experience in love, nor no man ever loved. Then no true love has ever existed. He mean that? Then no true love has ever existed. Uh, thank you, dear students, and see you soon, inshallah.